come from Shea, I used to go high school here. Um, they, you know, still got a few good mates from there, and um, I, I really, especially now that I'm a bit older too, like I'm really proud to come from Shep. Like, um, the community really gets around each other. They're very supportive, and um, since I moved back here about 18 months ago, um, you know, just being overwhelmed. Like, I keep telling everyone, like, I just can't believe how many people just jumped on board and, and really behind me. And especially leading up to this um, big fight too. I moved down to Melbourne, I think it was about 15, 16. Um, started training with Keith Ellis. Well, it really started, you know, back in the 80s and stuff. Um, my old man used to spar Leicester and, um, you know, they've always sort of been tied in, you know, with Barry and... Um, my first trainer, uh, Gary Scott, where I learned to box here in Shep, he took me down to Melbourne and he said, you know, I can't take you any further. I've taken you as far as I can. I want to pass you on to somebody with capable hands. And he took me down to Keith and introduced me to him. And um, then I stayed with Keith. And like it just, my career blossomed after that. Boxing is a really good sport that you've got to ha hold yourself accountable. And, you know, at the end of the day, you can bullshit everybody else. But when you've got to look in the mirror, you know, you know the truth. And so when I've got to face myself, when I'm sitting there looking, you know, I know that I've fought whoever's been put in front of me, you know, I've accepted those challenges. And um, it's a great feeling knowing that, um, you know, I haven't turned anybody away and that I've chased those big fights. And, you know, now off the back of that hard work, I've landed a big fight and, you know, it like just makes me that much more hungry to get another win. I wasn't really suited too much to the amateurs and, um, and I was training at a gym like, that, that was just full of pros and turning out really good pros at the time. So, you know, I was training with those guys, sparring with those guys, and um, I sat down and had a chat with Keith, and, you know, we, we thought it might be of best interest to possibly, you know, make a few mistakes on uh, the old registration form. So, um, you know, and then eventually I got a clip behind the ears and, you know, got a very stern warning not to ever do that again. And um, they can take away the fights, but they can't take away the experience. So it was still a great learning curve for me. Put me in front of a lot more people than you get at it at most local amateur events. And I, I think that, you know, that just helped me uh, develop, uh, like fast track me along, you know, as a pro. And um, although I wouldn't advise anybody to do it, uh, like I wouldn't change anything that we did. You know, to get into the top five, to you know, possibly challenge for a world title at some point later this year or earlier next year. Mate, it's, it's just everything that I've ever worked for and I just couldn't let this opportunity get away. And you know, like, mate, I would have fought for nothing. Like, it just, I just wanted it so bad. And, and like I said, when Mike gave me that call and said, it's done, it's like I'd already won. Like, I just, I couldn't believe it, mate. I was, you know, I, I just said to him, I said, mate, I'm putting the gear on. I'm, I'm running to Shep, you know, like I'm going for, I'm doing road work now, you know, it was 10 o'clock at night on a Tuesday, you know, and that, that was all just jumping out of my skin and I, it just feels like uh, for a long time I was promised the world and given an atlas, but now it's, it's there, it's just there and it's up to me and that's how I like it, I like it when, when it's up to me, you know, I've got no one else to blame, no one else to rest the like anything else on, I've just got to put it on myself and I've got to get the job done and I can't wait. Yeah, so I think on paper, I reckon um, me and him, we match up pretty good on paper. He likes to come forward, likes to be aggressive, he likes to hurt people. I like to go back, I like to think my way through and counter and stuff like that. So stylistically, I think it makes for a really good fight. I'm sure as everyone has picked up, you know, he's very similar to his father and stuff like that. I, I like that, but I like bikes coming forward at me trying to knock my head off and I think he's gonna like me backing up, wanting to take my head off. So I think stylistically it makes, makes for a great fight. I'm really unsure, like I, I guess you can't really tell a bloke's power until you taste it yourself. Um, I've seen him put a few guys down, um, so he looks, he'd have respectable power I would assume, um, but you know, I won't know until I get in there. Everyone loves sort of an underdog sort of story, you know, you come from nothing and you know, around here, there's not too much, but there's plenty of blokes trying to make something of himself. And it's, um, you know, like, uh, though all those people support me, you know, I support them as well. Like, and it's just a really good community feel.
I'm Dwight Ritchie. Tune in August 14 to see me take on Tim Zoo on main event pay-per-view. 